You have not received a spirit of bondage so as to be again in fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by virtue of which we cry, Abba, Father. Words taken from the lesson for this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the gospel this morning, we heard about the unjust steward squandering the possessions of his master. He was finally caught, told to give an accounting, and then he was dismissed. Today, we see many abuses. Abuses by the Lord's stewards at every level in our world and in the church. In her leaders, her priests, her religious, her teachers, and her families. But we also see innumerable abuses in various governments, as well as in our workplaces and in the marketplace. Seeing so much bad behavior, so many abuses, naturally causes a certain fear to take hold of us. Why so? Because we know. We know. We don't have to be told. Because we know that such abuse will inevitably be reported to the master and there will be an accounting and that things cannot go on this way. Something will have to give. We know intuitively that the scales of justice must be balanced. We know that those who sow the wind reap the whirlwind. There's going to be some whirlwinds. We know it. So many feel helpless in all this. What can we do? As faithful Catholics, we also recognize another player in this abuse, namely the devil and his horde of demons. They use these abuses of the stewards, especially to gain more and more power to attack the church and overcome the saints. From the book of Job, and the traditional teaching of the church, we know that the devil cannot do anything, folks. He can do nothing without God's permission. This is very important. Underline that. The devil cannot do anything without the permission of God. And God often gives permission to the devil based upon the sins and abuses being perpetrated In the world, the more man sins, the more permissions the devil receives to harass him, to tempt him and influence him to do what? Keep sinning, sin more and sin boldly. From the life of St. Anthony of Padua, when a novice stole the saint's commentary on the scriptures, Manuscripts were very valuable back then. They didn't have printing presses. It was handwritten. The saint prayed that it might be found and recovered. Then the devil, yes, the devil, acting as a sort of policeman for God, received permission to harass the poor sinner who was taking flight with Anthony's manuscript. Frightened out of his wits by the devil, He quickly returned the manuscript. This, by the way, this incident is why St. Anthony is the patron of lost objects. But anyway, let us not sin. We need to stop sinning and the devil will begin to be tied up. He won't get those permissions. Yet keeping Job in mind, we should also realize that God permits the devil to test the saints even when no sin has been committed. In this way, the devil proves God's servants, making them more virtuous and allowing them to participate in God's complete defeat of the evil fiend, the adversary. God wants us to crush his head and participate in that crushing process. Now, the main point we need to consider this morning is how the devil and men working for him always require God's permission before doing anything abusive in this world. The 19th century Carmelite mystic, Saint Mary of Jesus Crucified, known as the Little Arab, 
was once mysteriously possessed by the devil for 40 days. During this time, as the exorcist was praying, the habit of the saint was pushed up. Her Carmelite habit was pushed up such that her legs were exposed. The devil went wild, screaming, cover the little Arab, cover the little Arab. The master has forbidden us to do anything against modesty because she has never sinned on this point. He did not have permission to make her immodest. And he was burning for it. God made him cover her back up. In order for his passion to begin, our Lord had to give his permission. Remember? And this is seen in what our Lord said to Judas at the Last Supper. He said to his betrayer, what you are about to do, do quickly. In other words, I give you permission And you must do it quickly. St. Vincent de Paul, he observed this. Christ allowed, key word, allowed himself to be falsely accused of the most appalling charges, following his wish to be overwhelmed with disgrace for us. Yet he loathed unchastity so much that we never read of his having been in even the slightest way suspected of it, much less accused of it, even by his most determined opponents. Thank you, St. Vincent de Paul. Such an accusation was not leveled against our Lord, his majesty. Why? Because it was not permitted. Period. You do not have permission. Bang. They never did it because they couldn't do it. It's that simple. Once a saintly soul was instructed by his spiritual director to spit at an apparition he was having of Our Lady. Very holy person. He obeyed because the spiritual director suspected it was the devil. And when Our Lady came, he tried to obey. But all his saliva glands dried up. He could not produce any spit. God would not allow it. Permission was not granted. When St. Bernadette, our beloved St. Bernadette, tried to make the sign of the cross before Our Lady, her arm went limp, unable to make the sacred sign until Our Lady initiated it and taught her how to do it well. Only when Our Lady did it could Bernadette do it. Then permission was granted. When Julian the Apostate tried to rebuild the Hebrew temple in Jerusalem, fire came out of the earth. It opened up and destroyed the workers and what they had done. Not allowed. And finally, according to some recent biographies on Stalin, he was in the process of initiating a new world war using nuclear weapons this time. He always began such efforts with a purge of his own government. Soon after the purge was started, he was found lying on the floor, paralyzed from a stroke. He died shortly thereafter. The permission for such a war was not according to God's plan. And no is the answer. And Stalin died. Clearly, all that is done in this world must have God's permission. Not even a hair of our head can fall without him saying, okay, This means the more we sin and abuse God's established order, the more we go against nature, which is happening a lot today, the more easily permissions are granted to the devil and evil men to do yet more and more mischief. The permissions available at this time seem so broad that we often say the devil is unleashed. Well, I want to talk about how to bring in that leash. He is seemingly free to do what he wants. Let's not let that go on. The 19th century Carmelite mystic, Blessed Francis Palau, he writes, as there is no greater good in the world than the true faith and the Catholic religion, neither can there be a more cruel, more terrible, more terrifying affliction for the world than that the Catholic Church being handed over to the devils and the wicked groups like the Masons so that in punishment for our sins, they attempt to root out the holy tree of religion. That's what's happening. What can we do? 
Blessed Palau, he tells us. To weep bitterly for the deep wounds of the church would be a false resignation to conform ourselves to the permissive will of God. He himself wants us to dispute this battle with courage, with confidence and decision and determination. Happy, writes the saint, a thousand times happy the soul that struggles properly in this battle. Fortunate is the one who is so skillful and fights with such strength so as to gain the victory. What can we do to struggle and gain this triumph? It seems we are up against a seven-headed beast described in the apocalypse. We may use all our strength and power to knock out one, two, or even three heads on this beast, only to see them come back while we try to get the others. Hmm. Blessed Francis Palau, he makes a keen observation that instead of warring with the beast on his level, we go straight to God and we have his permissions with John. We do this best at the Holy Mass by satisfying God's justice with the sacrifice of our Lord and King on Calvary. With the spotless sacrifice of the Mass that is pleasing to God, we can accomplish all things. In a couple of his works, Palau describes some amazing courtroom scenes where the devil makes his case before God and he has a right to further attack the church because of his case. And he wants to attack the world too because of the sins of man. Palau then explains that it is most especially the priest vested for the Holy Mass and offering the sacrifice of Christ who is equipped to combat the devil in court and win the case. How important it is for the priest to know where he is and what he is doing at this Mass. Wow. Listen to some of Blessed Francis Palau's own experiences. He says, At midnight, lightning entering my cave. He was being a hermit for a while. He was on a, an island out in the Mediterranean off the coast of Spain. He was in a cave praying. He says, as it struck, the electricity shook the base of the mountain. It thundered again and again. Lightning struck the rocks and knocked down huge trunks. And God, seated on the clouds, called me with a voice of thunder and said, Son of the great prophets, Elias, leave your cave and come if you dare to fight with me. I stood up filled with terror, horror, and fear. And as I went out, a friendly voice said to me in the silence, Go, do not be afraid. And as I, vested with this strength, presented myself before the God of majesty, who came upon the clouds, God's throne sent out a shower of rays. Lord, he said, whom are you threatening? He responded, the wickedness of men had reached its limit. I am going to finish with them. In my anger, I have handed them over to the power of the demons, all the peoples and nations of the earth, their princes and kings. They reign according to their own fancies. They do not know me, and they deny me the due honor. Go away. Do not pray, because I wish to punish no, I will not go away, the saint responded, even though you kill me. Go away and rest. There's no repose for me while you are annoyed. Go away, and you will be safe in the heart of this mountain. And if not, one of the rays from these clouds will kill you. When this was said, the electricity left me blind, and the archangel Gabriel came to me. He took me by the arm and said to me, flee, hide yourself because you would die. Come, follow me. I looked around, and as I entered the deepest part of the cavern, a cave where nothing can be heard that is happening outside, I found there an altar prepared. There I found the archangel Michael. They clothed me in the priestly garments like one who is going to celebrate. Think about it. Michael, who is like unto God. He clothed the priest to be like unto God. Interesting, huh? Thus vested, Gabriel said to me, Now let us leave here. 
And now you can present yourself before God's throne. I went outside and the storm was still horrible. Even more so. I felt completely different, clothed by strength, however, without fear to the lightning or thunder. Now he's vested as a priest. He's vested like unto God. Lord, where are you going to raise your arm? He said against the world. I have handed your nations over to the power of the demons so that they may exercise heavenly vengeance on the kings and princes. Hello, that's what's going on right now. Don't you feel it? Lord, I confess the truth, he said. We are guilty in your sight. I, your people, your priests, your wrath is just. We have sinned. And with our sins, we have offended your majesty. I come to you clothed in power in the name of those peoples and nations, of their princes and priests, to ask you for mercy, grace, and pardon. May those burning rays of your wrath and fury, those demons, instruments of your justice, may they fall, Lord, and go into the eternal fire. May the demons go to hell because redemption is a fact consummated on Calvary and renewed each day on our altar. Lord, do you accept the offering which I have presented to you so many times on the altar and which is the body and blood of your son? Do you accept it as the price of redemption from the crimes and wickedness of mankind? Do you receive it? Is it pleasing to you? Yes, I have received and accepted it because it is my well-beloved son. If you accept it, he's making his case, you see. If you accept it, the redemption is a fact accomplished on Golgotha and renewed on your altars. If your people, the nations and their kings have been justly handed over to the demons and their wickedness and evil on account of their crimes, Lord, they are now redeemed and saved by the blood of your son, which I present to you offered upon the altar. Lord, stop the storm, withdraw the rays of your anger and show us your paternal kind countenance. Clouds go back storm. I adjure you in the name of our redeemer. The storm stopped at that moment and the clouds were clothed in glory. It was 12 o'clock midnight. In other words, an echo of Christmas. The brightness of the moon was obscured by the glory of the majesty of God who presented himself to us seated like a judge on a throne to give us audience. God called Satan, he said, who appeared in the form of an enormous dragon. With its tail, it dragged along all the demons of hell. And there he presented his accusations. The archangel Michael was there pleading for us. And he said to me, close the book. Keep it secret so that nobody hears or knows these things because they are secrets. The dragon began to to direct accusations against all the governments on earth, both ecclesiastical from the Pope all the way down and civil. He began with the priests, especially those of the higher rank. From Judas down to the last ordained and minor orders. The archangel St. Michael answered each and every objection. The fight was very great because with those two princes, there were seven more on our side. Oh, if only I could explain this struggle. It is a secret. As the case was being tried, the judge asked the seven princes who were defending us, is there by any chance faith on earth? Yes, there is, answered Gabriel. Let that believer come to my tribunal. The two princes, Michael and Gabriel, presented me to God and said, This is the priest who has faith in charge of defending our cause before your tribunal. What do you ask? God asked him. Lord, you are just and your judgments are right. You have accepted the sacrifice which was presented to you on Golgotha and which is renewed in a thousand places every day on the altar. Accepted by your justice as the price of redemption is the body and blood of your son. The redemption is accomplished. All the people and nations on earth are redeemed with the blood of of the lamb. You are just. And I ask according to the laws of your justice that you enclose in the abyss that instrument of your wrath, the devils. Let them fall, Lord. 
Let the demons fall into hell and be locked up there forever because the nations of the earth and their kings and princes are saved now and redeemed from their power, at least maybe given a space to convert. But he goes on. But Lord, if it is impossible, listen to my prayer and do not reject my petition. If possible, when you disperse the wicked groups, in other words, the Masons and all those against the church, and throw them into the abyss, save the wicked person. Convert him, Lord. Make him a good Catholic. And thus the wickedness will be fully dispelled. The afflictions destroyed. And you will have more stones to rebuild your church. And your glory will shine more brightly. My prayer was interrupted, he writes, by a concert of voices which said, repeating the same petition, let the demons fall into hell. Let them fall and be cast from your presence. Let them fall with all their power, with all their blasphemies, with all their filth and wickedness. The judge raised his hand. He made the sign with his finger against the demons. And Michael, lifting up his voice, said, Go, accursed, to eternal fire. Who is like to God? Their permissions were removed. And they were cast down from God's throne. Then Gabriel said to the judge, Lord, I need a pontiff who will be my finger and your finger, my arm and your arm to chain up, tie and enclose the demons in hell. Who is entrusted with this mission? The judge answered, look on earth. And this applies to all of us. Look on earth and see if you find there a man full of faith. And he will be my finger my hand and my omnipotent arm to chain up, to cast out into hell the demons and to form people according to my heart. He will save my church against the frightful kings and against those who seek to harm her, both from without and from within. Thank you, blessed Francis Palau, Everyone of Christ's faithful can assist the priest at the Holy Mass in having the permissions of the devil and evil men overruled and overwritten by the precious blood of Christ. We have what it takes to satisfy the justice of God. All sins can be wiped out. It's already been paid. We just need to apply and get the person to convert. We may not be able to have all the permissions revoked due to God's mysterious plan, but the good we can do in such a struggle will only be known perhaps at the end of time. Surely the devil's plans have already been frustrated time and time again from such efforts of saintly souls. Let's face it, it's very likely he is behind schedule. He's not as far as long as he wants. You can feel the anger in some of these leaders. They're so mad that their ideas and their plans are being frustrated. This is one of the reasons why. Because there's good souls having the permissions for those plans revoked. And every time they get planned to do something, they're like Stalin. They're on a stroke, lying on the ground, dying. Let's have the permissions removed, folks. And this will be the case again and again and again. Oh, what active participation in the Holy Mass can exceed such a struggle of a holy soul with God. Let us then pray to have the permissions removed from the demons and the various evil stewards who are attacking our beloved church, even from within as well as from without. God will listen. And the devil will not be able to do all he has planned. Folks, dearly beloved, the mass is the entryway into heaven's mysterious courtroom. Let us not fail to take advantage of it. Let us not fall into bondage of fear, but rather engage in the struggle as adopted sons who have been empowered to cry out, Abba, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.